So today we're going to look at the groove from Our House by Madness. This is a song from 1982 and at the time they were my first ever favourite band in the world. Uh, I feel like I learned quite a lot from Madness about how the components of a song fit together because there were lots of little ding ding boop boop things happening in their arrangements and it was a band uh, comprised of seven members and uh, there's always a reasonable amount going on in their songs. Uh, this was on the album Rise and Fall and is famous for having been on the uh, the sitcom, if you can call it that, The Young Ones, which was one of the legendary TV shows of all time. I vividly remember learning how to play this song all those years ago. It was the first beat I ever learned where the bass drum fell in between the hi-hat notes. And if you haven't done it before, it's a pretty good thing to know how to do. You really have to have it. So when we first start learning the drums, we, we kind of deal with the challenge of putting bass drum notes on any of the eighth notes of your conventional rock beat with the snare on two and four and you may have learned how to also vary the snare drum patterns so that you're playing the snare on different eighth notes and so on and so on but there's a point where you have to step out of that comfort zone and learn how to coordinate the bass drum uh, with the hi-hat playing in between the hi-hat notes. Here's a quick demo of the groove for you goes something like this <laughs> So let's take a look at what Woody played for us on this song. We've got bass on the one, the and of one, then the first of our two in between bass drum notes on the E of the two, and then we have bass on the three, bass on the R of three, which is the second in between note, and then finally bass on the and of four. So it sounds like this played slowly one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and and a four and one and two E and three and a four and now playing the bass on the one the and of one and the three should be pretty easy if you don't know how to do that comfortably go back and check out some of my earlier videos about how to get yourself started playing beats but that's just this one and two and three and four and one and two and three four and then we have the bass on the and of the four easy peasy one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so uh, I'm not going to talk about that anymore next we're going to play the bass on the two e and um, what we're going to do first is just focus on the mechanics of that two e and because what will tend to happen if you've not played something like this before, and as I explained recently in the video about the, the, uh, the strokes last night, is that when you play the bass drum at first in between your hi-hat notes, the right hand or whichever hand you're playing your hi-hat with will tend to want to follow the bass drum. So instead of going one and two E and, you might find yourself going one and two E and, something like this, one and two E and. Alternatively, you might find that the, the bass will try and just conform to another right hand stroke. So maybe it will try to find its way to the two or maybe the two and. So you might end up with one and two, one and two rather. The bass would kind of try and join the snare. One and two. Uh, or alternatively, one and two and. Maybe it's anything in between, I guess. One and two E and that's where you want to be and you want to get that nice in between thing happening. So we're going to practice this really, really slowly and just focus on the two E and two E and two E and two E and two E and. Now to try and keep this in time, you can practice going two E and two E and two E and two E and or if you prefer to count a whole bar one E and two E and three E and four E and always good to have a bit of uh, counting practice three E and four E and one E and two E and three E and four E and and what's happening here is you're just kind of letting your brain get used to the idea of this particular combination of moves. Three E and four E and. Am I still in time with myself? 
once you've practiced that a little bit and it's starting to feel comfortable and you're not feeling that your right hand wants to pull with the, the, the bass on the E, you can then go back and add the one and the and. So you'd go one and two E and. And it's enough to practice that and you can turn that into a bar. One and two E and. One and two E and. One and two E and. And don't be afraid to really, really slow it down, uh, which is pretty much what my videos are about, actually. One and two E and. Learn how to count really nice and steady and then learn how to play at a slow tempo. That's all you need, really. And then when you speed things up, it'll sound good. And one. And two E and one and two E and one and two E and one and two E and okay. Spend some time doing it. Uh, nobody gets these things sounding really good just fluffing through. Just really spend some time, make it sound accurate, and develop a sense of confidence that everything is falling in its right place. Use a metronome. Next, we've got the in between the bass drum note on the R uh of the three. So it's going to be like this and a uh, four. So it's kind of the other way around from what we just practiced for the two. So here we had uh, two E and, and now we have and a uh, four. Okay, and the coordination might feel different just because you got the hang of that first one doesn't mean that this is going to suddenly feel easier. You might have to work just the same on this one. Maybe not, it's impossible to say, but if you do, don't let that put you off. There's, there's no rush to get these things right. Learn to be slow and patient. Not very easy, especially in this age. And a four. But again, break it down and work on that component on its own. Okay. Once you've got the hang of that, and again, it's sounding fluent, you can, you can kind of try and, and do that in sequence as well. And a four, and a four, and a four. And a four. Does it feel comfortable? Add the three. Three and a four and. Three and a four and. Put the bass in on the and. A four and. Three and a four and. So what we've done is we've broken everything down into little chunks, or broken the challenging bits at least into little chunks, and then we've worked on them so that you make sure that everything lines up really well, that you're counting nice and evenly, and that you keep a nice consistent uh, approach to your strokes with the hi-hat, and you notice any of that kind of little tugging. And uh, don't worry, you, you might practice this one day and spend a bunch of time on it and think it sounds really smooth, and then you come back uh, tomorrow to do a little bit more. Hopefully you're, you're trying every day to work on these things um, and it starts feeling wonky or you maybe even sit down and at first you can't do it at all and you feel like you have to learn it all over again but that's fine that happens quite a lot. So don't feel like just because you got the hang of something once uh, you don't have to do like nine million more repetitions to have it sort of really registering in your body. Once you feel that you've got all those uh, lined up then you can try and put the whole groove together and you're playing it nice and slowly one and two E and three and a four and one and two E and three and a four and just do this as much as you can three and a four and try and listen for all the elements bass and snare up front one and two E and three and a four and hi hat a little bit polite and a four doesn't need to be very loud yes you can hear the clack clack of the plastic hi hat here. And, but that's just life and three and three and a four and okay but you know when you're keeping things at a slow tempo slow 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 um it allows you to kind of evaluate how nice and clean you're playing once you've got everything flowing nice and smoothly you can try and play at the tempo of the song and you know that you've got it sounding good when that works for you you can play from the beginning to the end of the song now the way the groove fits in the song is uh, if i remember correctly mostly in four bar phrases where um, the groove we've just discussed is three bars of it and on the last bar of the four bar phrase we've got bass on one and 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 three and and so a little bit of a break there for my in between your bass drum notes to let you recover from the trauma of it so it comes together something like this one two three four dash one two Three, four, and 
and that's pretty much that. That's the groove for Our House by Madness. Slightly obscure, but gives you an opportunity to develop your better coordination so that your bass drum fits nicely in between the hi-hat notes when required. Cool, I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. As always, let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, if you've learned how to play this, oh, I'd love to see. Uh, meanwhile, time for you to go away and practice. <laughs>